There's one verse, and it's sort of well known for everybody would know it if they went to church or Sunday school or anything, and it's John 3 and 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And you sort of just take it word by word, and it explains itself to you. I was born on the 27th of December 1981. It makes me 21. A lot of people don't believe it. But um, eh, I was lucky enough to be brought up in a Christian home. Mother and father were saved. Two older brothers were saved. Eh, at that time, one of my older brothers wasn't saved. And my older sister and my younger sister wasn't saved. But eh, my mother and father faithfully would have... It was nearly like a chore when we were younger. Sunday morning would have come and you'd have dreaded it. Church, Sunday morning, Sunday school, then church, Sunday school in the afternoon up to the back hill, as we would call it, to the Brethren Sunday school. Church in the evening time, and then the mission hall, if you were bad, on the way home. But uh, I'd just like to thank them, because from the earliest age, I knew that I needed to be saved. Amen. It didn't matter what mission or what was on in the local area we went to it and faithfully you were told your need of salvation and even standing here tonight some people would say oh don't send them to this Sunday school and don't send them to that Sunday school we were sent to them because you were told and you knew well I got saved on the 16th of September 1997 faith mission we're running missions in the Bambridge area and they had been doing them for some time and a man you all would know here would be Trevor Landers. He was running the mission in the Macarally Orange Hall. And he had been running, the mission had been running a couple of weeks. And uh, I had been pestering Trevor to come to my house, but he wouldn't come. And the night at the door, he said to my dad, why, why does Stephen want me to come to your house? And I told him that I had got saved the night before and I wanted him to come. The night before, I don't remember really much about the, the meeting the night before, but all I can remember is that every night you had been asked for a favourite hymn, and I would have called out 460. That little hymn, gospel hymn, Let the Lord Have His Way, every night. And I would have sung that all my heart. And that night, on that Wednesday night, I bowed my head and gave my life to the Lord. Amen. And it's funny how things happen, because the following night, my Uncle Samuel was sitting outside our house, and we went to that mission that night on the Thursday night with him. And me and my brother Alan were sitting in the back of the car, or his Jeep it is, and we were waiting for my dad to come out to get into the car. And Samuel, for some reason, had never ever asked us this before, and he just turned around that night and he says to us, so boys, has any you saved? And that was my opportunity to tell someone that I got saved the night before. It's wonderful how God works. And the following night, my brother got saved. Amen. Well, school for me, whenever some people will tell you that school is a hard time, well, my school was easy. There was only about 50 people in my primary school when I got saved, and everybody knew everybody. So it wasn't hard to tell people that you had got saved because most people went to church. It was a done thing in the local area that everybody went to Sunday school or church. So people getting saved was a good thing, because everybody knew that the Lord needed their life. Secondary school was sort of easy as well, because uh, at that stage in my life, I was playing rugby, and everybody knew me as playing rugby, and uh, everybody knew where you stood as you were a Christian, and it made it easier. Uh, even going to university then in later life as well was, was, was easy as well, meeting new people. God really blessed me, because I was introduced to a lot of Christian people when I went there as well. It's wonderful how pe God brings people together and even people you were sitting beside in class for the first time talking to them and seeing how God has worked in their lives and blessed them. Mm -hmm. But back to the, the rugby aspect, God really blessed me in sort of gifts as such in, in rugby and I sort of went and played for many teams. But some people I hear talking would say that sport's a bad thing and sports shouldn't be this and sports shouldn't be that. But I firmly believe that I'm in rugby for a reason. And God has used me in several occasions to talk to people when things happen. And 
to be truthful, there's a lot of people watching you all the time because they know that there's something different about you and there's something you have that they want and they can't fill in their life. And it's really, really sad to see them on a Saturday night going to where they're going. But you know that you're just praying that someday the day will turn. And sometimes they even speak to you when hard times come, they will come and talk to you. There's, there's actually three. There's me, my brother, and another fella, Andrew Morrison, in our team. And the boys all know that if there's a party on, don't ask us because they know we're not going. Don't ask us for, to give us drink because they know we're getting drink. In our club, there's a tradition that if somebody gets man of the match, they'll be offered a pint after the game. If any of us three players get it, you'll give a, a pint of black and water because they know that you'll just refuse to drink it. And I honestly think that's a blessing from God because that's given a real good stand for God to know where you are and in front of all those people, no matter who they are or where they're from, that you're for God. Hey, but later on, I, I'm not that old as you can tell. Like, I'm not as old as my dad, like, so I'm, sort of, I'm all right yet. <laughs> but uh, I honestly don't know what I'm going to do with my life. Hopefully going to teach, but sort of... Everything sort of seems to change from day to day. Like on Saturday night, sort of the, the Lord has opened another door to me, maybe to go back to university to do something different. And, and to be honest, it's easy because you just live your, your life the way God wants you. When he takes you by the hand, there's no, there's no hard choices because he makes them for you. So you just give your life to him, and if he asks you to, to go to England or he wants you to go to Belfast, that you, you do it. It's like that children's, well, it's not a children's rhyme, I was going to say. It's a, it's a story in the Bible, the Jonah and the Whale. You know that if you don't do it eventually, you will do it. So I would just thank the Lord for the blessings he's done in my life and things that he has done. Like, I didn't want to go into much detail because there's no point boring you to tears, like. I just give you the, the bare brunt of it, and I'd just like to thank God for things he's done in my life and things he still has to do in my life. Thank you.